The, the assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Julius Mada Bayo, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Julius Mada Bayo, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, and to invite him to address the assembly. Your Excellency Dennis Francis, President of the General Assembly, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, colleague heads of states and government, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, permit me to extend my heartfelt congratulations on your auspicious assumption of the presidency of the 78th session of the General Assembly. My delegation and I stand unwaveringly by your side, committed to fortifying the bedrock of global unity during your tenure. I offer my profound respect and gratitude to your predecessor, Mr. Saba Kurosi of Hungary, whose depth stewardship of the 77th session is a guiding beacon for all. To our esteemed Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, your dedication to weaving together the strands of global consensus for battling poverty, planetary crisis, and championing sustainable development goal is a testament to your leadership. Mr. President, the soul of Sierra Leone, echoing the spirit of Pan-Africanism, resonates with the clarion call of this year's theme, rebuild trust and reignite global solidarity. A testament to our enduring democratic spirit was showcased on June 24th, when in free, fair, and peaceful ele multi-tier elections, the Sierra Leonean people elected their leaders across various tiers of governance. My re-election as president for a second final term serves not merely as an endorsement of my leadership, but a solemn testament to my government's commitment to fashioning a Sierra Leone that thrives as a united, peaceful, and dynamic bastion of hope and opportunity. A nation where our aspirations for abundant jobs, food security, quality education, and equitable health care are not mere dreams, but manifest realities. Where justice and opportunities are not mere prerogatives of a few, but the birthright of all. Mr. President, in the face of global upheavals, from the pandemic to geopolitical tensions exemplified by the war in Ukraine and the ensuing food crisis, my first time stood as the beacon of our commitment to democratic freedoms and human rights. We rooted out the unpleasant legacies of the past, repealing antiquated laws, such as the seditious libel statue that lingered for half a century we consigned the death penalty to the honors of history and charted bold advances against the scourge of corruption. Our devotion to education was unambiguous. Over 800,000 new learners were introduced under our ages, and we significantly augmented domestic educational funding, ensuring it constituted an average of 22% of our national budget. We, we champion an ethos of radical inclusion, providing unfettered and tuition-free access to quality primary and secondary school education for all. In our unwavering commitment to dismantle the barriers of gender inequality, 
My administration declared a state of emergency on the heinous crime of rape and sexual and gender-based violence. Sierra Leone urged the global community for solidarity on access to justice and remedies for survivors of sexual violence and the recognition of November 18 by this General Assembly as World Day for the prevention of healing from sexual exploitation, abuse, and violence. Our Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment Act of 2022 shows our commitment to equality. With this act, I've proudly inscribed our nation's pledge to reserve a minimum of 30% of seats in elected and appointed offices for women, ensuring equal employment opportunities, lengthening maternity leaves, and compelling our financial institutions to chart pathways that amplify women's access to financial resources that they so rightfully deserve. As I step into my second term, Mr. President, my government has carved out five pillars that guide our national development trajectory to support sustainable development and social progress. Food security, one, food security, intertwined with investment in agriculture, is poised to just feed, not just to feed our nation, but to fear job creation, propel economic growth, and alleviate the weight of poverty. Two, human capital development, meticulously crafted for the modern era with a special lens for gender equality. Three, youth employment scheme. This promises our younger generation that their energy, passion, and ambition will find fertile ground in Sierra Leone. Four, cutting edge technology and infrastructure program. This is conceptualized to pave sustainable pathways of economic accent. And a thorough, five, a thorough revamp of public service architecture, refining its essence for utmost, utmost efficiency, professionalism, and service delivery. SDG is towards peace, pro prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. Mr. President, 78 years ago, the United Nations was born from the profound understanding that peace, development, and human rights are inextricably intertwined. Each element nourishes the other, creating an equilibrium essential for global harmony. As we stand at this juncture, let us remember that the noble ambitions enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations to foster international cooperation, to confront and surmount challenges, be they economic, social, cultural, or humanitarian in nature. It is in unity and shared purpose that the promise of a brighter, just, and peaceful world is realized. The resonant theme of this General Assembly, therefore, opens a horizon of possibilities, beckoning us to harmoniously forge ahead in the shared pursuit of accelerating actions on the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals towards peace, prosperity, progress, and enduring sustainability for all. Our world faces formidable challenges, widespread poverty, persistent hunger, the looming shadow of climate change, and the unsettling presence of sustained and emerging conflicts. To honor our 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Commitment, member states of the United Nations must rekindle the fires of trust and galvanize a renaissance of global solidarity. Trust requires a harmonious amalgamation of our collective wisdom and resources. Solidarity mandates our unwavering cohesion 
even when navigating different and opposing philosophical terrains. In pursuing the 2030 agenda, we must resolve to leave no one behind. We must fervently champion inclusivity, recognizing the intrinsic value of every individual, irrespective of their circumstances. Progress has been made, but we acknowledge that the road ahead is challenging. However, this challenge also presents an opportunity for innovation and collaboration and reimagining our global priorities. ECOWAS region as peace and security. Mr. President, we view with deep concern the rising tides of insecurity and the subtle erosion of democratic governance and ideas in the West African sub-region and the Sahel. Sierra Leone raises its voice alongside our ECOWAS allies, expressing unequivocal dissent towards an extra constitutional changes of government. Such challenges to the very bedrock of our democracy threaten the stability of individual nations and the fabric of our collective African identity. Why we stand united? It is not simply a call to maintain things as they are. Real stability and lasting peace don't come from resisting threats or building defenses. Instead, they arise from genuine, open conversations. True dialogue requires that everyone at the negotiating table must be ready to seek and find common ground. Why we emphasize the importance of dialogue, we cannot ignore the crucial reality. The ongoing threats to our, con to our continent's constitutional stability are signs of deeper problems. Every action that undermines the rule of law is connected to underlying issues. These range from past and present injustices to the burden of poverty, widespread unemployment, unemployment, and the dangers of discrimination. Our duty is clear. We must lift our people from poverty. We should focus on creating jobs and supporting industries that benefit our countries and our continent. Mr. President, national electoral reforms. Elections as vehicles of democratic trans transformation fortify governance and allow peaceful transitions. After our nation's multi-tier elections on June 24th, we stand resolved to strengthen our democratic foundation, recognizing the significance of deepening our democracy. I have instituted a National Electoral Systems Review Committee to address historical challenges to our elect electoral processes. Since our first multi-tier elections we are conducted after the Civil War in 2002, the electioneering process has been plagued with persistent challenges, including contestations of declared presidential election results by the constitutionally mandated electoral commissioner. To address these historical challenges and consolidate our democrat democratic gains, a comprehensive review of the electoral system is necessary to reform Sierra Leone's electoral landscape. The National Electoral Systems Review Committee will comprise the government, civil society, political parties, professional organizations, and development partners. It holds the mantle of evaluating existing framework, institutional arrangements, and observer mission reports. Its mandate extends to proposing vital reforms fortifying Sierra Leone's electoral integrity. These actions encapsulate our commitment to forging a fertile environment for dialogue, affirming democratic governance, and fostering enduring peace. Mr. President, it is regrettable to note the decision 
of certain member states to introduce unilateral cohesive measures, including visa re re restrictions on Sierra Leonean citizens following the recent multi-tier national elections. We observe that such unilateral measures, which are in contravention of international law, have sometimes been the response to electoral outcomes in other African nations to exact political pressure. As members of the international rules-based community, African states strive for sovereignty and meaningful cooperation based on mutual respect and understanding. In democratic processes, every democracy faces unique challenges. However, the essence of sovereignty, as contained in the UN chapter, is the ability of member states to address and resolve internal matters independently and without external pressure. In our engagement on the international stage, we hope for understanding and mutual respect, especially on important issues like national elections, Constructive dialogue and open channels of communication should be the pillars of our global interaction and not punitive unilateral cohesive measures that do not further the entrenchment of democracy, but instead strain relations between nations. Sierra Leone remains steadfast in its commitment to free, fair, and credible elections alongside our dedication to the rule of law. We believe that democracy, we believe that democ democratic progress is a journey and its pace varies from one nation to another. We respect the individual paths countries have taken in their quest for democracy and anticipate the same level of understanding and respect for ours. We aspire to nurture relationships rooted in solidarity, cooperation, and mutual respect, or directed towards a shared global future. United Nations security tenure. As Sierra Leone takes its non-permanent seat at the United Nations security for the 2024-2025 term after a hiatus of 53 years, we are deeply aware of our shared duty to uphold international peace and security. The profound nexus between peace, development, and human rights will be the baking guide in our priorities. We stand poised, resolute, and committed to forging a world where these ideas are not mere aspirations, but enduring reali realities for all. Sierra Leone fully subscribes to the ideas of multilateralism as a tool for global peace and security. Our vision is to serve, the vital, to serve as the vital conduit linking the ECOWAS community of the, uh, of the West African states, the African Union, and the nations in focus with, with the Security Council. As we yearn for tranquility and justice, we pledge our commitment to collaborate with the five permanent members of the Security Council. And as part of the 10 elected members and the three African representatives, reform of the UN Security Council, Mr. President, Sierra Leone recognizes the pressing issue of Security Council's legitimacy, equitable representation, and transparency. In a world reshaped by geopolitical realities, true global peace and security hinge on reforms and the rejuvenation of United Nations Security Council and the UN General Assembly. Joined by fellow United Nations member states, Sierra Leone committed at the 2005 World Summit to support reforms of the Security Council as essential elements of our overall effort to reform the United Nations, to make it more broadly representative 
efficient, transparent, and thus to enhance further its effectiveness and the legitimacy and implementation of its decisions. Why the discourse has, been, has seen forward movement, the historical injustices endured by Afri at the African continent remain unresolved at the intergovernmental negotiations. Africa, glaringly, stands alone as the only region without permanent representation within the Security Council and is conspicuously unrepresented in its non-permanent category. The United Nations security remains trapped in the era of 1945, when much of Africa was still in the regrettable grip of colonialism. We must not allow this colonial ethos to persist three quarters of a century later. Africa demands for two permanent seats, complete with commensurate rights, including the, the veto is maintained, if maintained, and five non-permanent seats are issues of equity, justice, and our right to have an equal say in the decision making on issues that affect the African region. Our conviction is steadfast. Security Council reform should squarely confront these long-standing inequity and imbalance addressing Africa's unique circumstances. As the coordinator of the African Committee of 10 Heads of State and Government on the reform of the United Nations Security Council, Sierra Leone will continue to advocate and garner support among member states and other interest groups for the common African position as enshrined in the Ezzouini Consensus and SAD Declaration. We will also envisage in viewing the working methods of the Council to instill transparency, accountability, democracy, and, the ulti and ultimately renewed legitimacy. Climate change. Mr. President, our collective pursuit of sustainable development confronts the triple planetary crisis of pollution, climate change, and biodiversity loss. Despite contributing minimally to these crises, Sierra Leone remains intensely vulnerable to, these, to their repercussion, a reality compounded by our limited capacity to cope. Our national adaptation plan, launched in 2018, as an embodiment of our commitment, designed to have our vulnerability by 2030, it underscores risk awareness, regulatory enhancement, institutional empowerment, and gender responsive adaptation strategies. Sierra Leone seeks equitable and timely access to climate financing. We request unfettered access to leverage new climate change adaptation and mitigation technologies and shared knowledge. Our salvation from the escalating climate change crisis lies in collective wisdom and concerted efforts. Global solidarity. In today's complex world, the urgent need to rebuild trust and strengthen global unity st stands out. We must adopt a cooperative approach, set aside individualistic actions, and promote shared progress based on common values. As we deal with, with disputes of sovereignty and self-determination across the world, we must also resolve to do so with dialogue exhausting all avenues for peaceful resolution. Conclusion. In this evolving multipolar world, where conflicts ripple across borders and power dynamics are in flux, we must recognize our shared interest and intertwined destinies. The multifaceted crisis 
challenging our global community demands unified action. For our collective strength is determined by our most vulnerable segments. The voices we make today, the choices we make today, have far-reaching implications for tomorrow. We stand at a crossroads. One path takes us to mere rhetor rhetorical commitments to equity and solidarity, while the other beckons us to act with conviction, driven by, by profound belief in equity and justice, economic justice, social justice, political justice. Let us choose wisely, for the fate of generations to come hinges on the decisions we make now. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone for the statement just made, and I request, request protocol to escort His Excellency.